Paul Varghese. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Born and raised, been here most of my life. I haven't had a day job in uh, three years. Been doing stand-up full-time since then. Can't really complain. So. Haven't had a boss, which is good. Not looking forward to getting one. So hopefully it still works out three years from now, three days from now, three hours from now. Whatever. So. I have no other talents. I'm banking everything on stand-up right now. So I have no other choice. If this doesn't work out, then I'm going into welding. Hey, everybody, let's get ready for one of my favorites. Here he is. He looks like he needs to head to the hill for some pasta. This little guy, he right here is the youth medium, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for my buddy, Paul Varghese. All right, so uh, I flew in from Dallas yesterday, and... Uh, Whenever I fly to town, my friend Charles, he's my ride to the airport. And he's one of those guys, like, he's always really worried about getting me to the airport on time. So, like, the night before, he'll do that airport math. You know what I'm talking about? Like, all right, Paul, it's going to take us 25 minutes to get to the airport. Plus, you got to be there 45 minutes before to check in. You're Indian, so add an hour. <laughs> Carry the brown. And, uh, yo, we should have left last week. Is that Awesome. I'm scared of terrorism too, but I don't freak out when I fly though, because ever since I was a little kid, I was always taught to be calm in an emergency. Every fire drill I ever had in elementary school, the teacher always made us get in a single file line. You guys remember that? School's in flames. Single file line. Alphabetical. Alphabetical, my last name is Varghese. How racist is that? Right? All the white kids with last names like Adams, Barnes, Baxter's, Carpenters, out the front door. Me and the kids Wong and Wang, completely screwed. <laughs> we lost another valedictorian. <laughs> when I was on my flight, on my flight, there was a lady who had one of those pet carry-all cages, you know, where you can take the pet actually on the plane. And I, I felt bad because there was actually a bird in there. And I'm looking at the lady, I'm like, you're killing his self-esteem. I mean, you have no confidence in your cockatoo, you know? Because he's looking at me like, I have wings. <laughs> this is so ironic. <laughs> I'm blessed with the gift of flight, and now I'm on one? <laughs> Next time, give me sunflower seeds and a head start, you yeah? know? <laughs> I went to my motherland a few years ago, my motherland, India, went there a few years ago. It's a beautiful place if you've ever been. They actually have elephants, monkeys, and cobras out in the open, but they still have a zoo. There is a zoo in India. It's, it's empty. That'd be the easiest job, Indian Zoo tour guide. Here's where the elephants were supposed to be. I saw the same monkey on the street that I saw in the zoo. I'm like, how does that work? It's closing time at the Indian Zoo. The monkey's unlocking his cage and clocking out. <laughs> I'm late for happy hour. <laughs> India should just be honest. They should just put, just put a huge cage over the entire country. That's what they should do. A zoo in India. You realize? What, what's the, that's like Alabama caging up a redneck, putting him on display. It's like, <laughs> I think he wants my Bud Light. <laughs> Ooh, mama, look, he's dipping. <laughs> <laughs> I live by myself, and my cousin told me that I should get a pet to keep me company. Okay, I'm single, I'm a guy, I live in an apartment. I don't need companionship, I need cleaning, okay? I need a dog that can dust, okay? Because the way I see it, if you can teach a dog to lead the blind, you can teach a dog to vacuum. He can lead the vacuum around the living room, that's what I'm saying. I would never get a cat. Cats have no ambition. Look at all the things dogs are doing. Rescue dogs, sled dogs, seeing eye dogs, drug sniffing dogs. You will never see a drug sniffing cat. Never. <laughs> never. Have you seen how crazy they get off a catnip? <laughs> Can you imagine cocaine? He'd be so hooked. He'd be selling everything and all his toys outside on the streets. Hey, how much for this ball of yarn? How much for this ball of yarn? I'll throw in a scratching post. If you think about it, cats are just like drug addicts. If you think about it, they, they sleep all day. They're gone all night. <laughs> they have way more kids that they can never take care of. 
<laughs> but I feel sorry for dogs too, because dogs have no options when it comes to drinking. You ever notice that? No matter what they eat, they just get water, like they're in prison. You figure it'd be easy to know what dog liked what, what beverage based off the breed, right? Like a German Shepherd, Jägermeister. Spotted tea for the English Bulldog. I don't know, tequila shots for the Chihuahua. Doberman, gin, and juice. Irish setter, all of the above, you know? <laughs> Sometimes when I get bored, I go and actually buy a big bag of dog food, and whenever my drunk friends come over and pass out on the couch, and they wake up the next morning hungover, I pour some milk in it and pass it off as cereal. And that is fun, that is fun for me. Hey, I got to drive them home, I get to play with them. My cousin said I should get a Basenji. That's what I should get. It's a dog that can't bark. Okay, what's the point of that? What am I supposed to do? Okay, so if somebody tries to break into the house, how is he going to warn me? By playing charades? Sounds like <laughs> At least give him like those little throat voice boxes. Like, the, you know, the people who smoke have the woof woof something, you know? Just give him. Or better yet, give him the Stephen Hawking computer. You know, the Stephen Hawking, he can. Intruder, intruder, <laughs> see you outside. Mm -hmm. If I could get any dog, any dog, any dog, I would get that dog. I would either get two, one of two dogs. I'd either get McGruff the Crime Dog or that dog from Blue's Clues, okay? Because, yeah, because they're both on TV, which means they're pulling in a paycheck. They could split a rent. They got fleas and a 401k. And maybe, if I'm nice enough, they'll put me on their insurance. You know, I can go get a physical at PetSmart. It works out. I love small dogs. I love big dogs, but I hate the big angry dog. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody has that relative or friend, has the dog that always gets mad when you come over. He just tries to attack you. You ever notice, if you freak out and get scared, it's always your fault, never the dogs, never the dogs. Paul, what's the matter? You don't like dogs? I'm like, I love dogs, but yours is loading a gun. <laughs> he just threw up gang signs with his paw. Because they give you that dog owner logic, all those dog owner lines, he can smell fear. He causes fear. He has claws and fangs. That's his job. He smelt it. He dealt it, you know? That's like being friends with Chef Boyardee. He can smell ravioli. Because he makes ravioli. That's what he does. I had a friend tell me one time, Paul, don't wear dark colors. He'll think you're an intruder. I'm like, uh, this doesn't rub off. You know what I'm saying? I want to get my parents a dog, because they're retired. I figured that would keep them company, right? Here's the thing, they built a new house, and I go down there to help them unpack, and they're all lonely and stuff, but I'm actually flipping through the photo album. There's no pictures of me in my dad's photo album of me from the ages of 12 to 20. There's no pictures. I asked my dad why, seriously, he looks at me and goes, you are ugly. <laughs> you looked awkward. We felt awkward. Who wants to relive those memories? <laughs> All right, guys, thank you guys very much. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Enjoy the show.